open force. BMW Oracle will just luff and being the now the lured boat as they back down, Alingi needing to get out of that windward position. There is a change in the onus on the rules. It changes to Alingi in that situation. So Alingi goes bow down to get out of there. Oracle, big ease on the mainsail. Bit of cavitation on the rudder. But Alingi storms away to the windward side of the starting box. Brad Butterworth having a look back over his shoulder. Alingi into her first circle. Such great competitors. So many of them work together for a long time. They know each other inside out. Alingi leading out of the circle. He's up. BMW Oracle just tacking to Lured. From that move, it would indicate that Oracle wants the left in the pre-start. Coots fought hard, did a, quite a hard manoeuvre to get that Lured position bow forward. Alingi now, realising that the gauge is quite close. Jess tries to gauge to windward of Oracle. Oracle controlling in the lured position as we come up to the start. Russell Coots, time on distance perfect as Ed Beard brings the bow up. Initial advantage, Oracle. Clean start by these two super crews, both in Emirates Team New Zealand yachts with Oracle sailing in NZL 92. And just having that advantage now, fine start from Russell Coots and his crew. See the bow of the lured boat, that's the Alingi uh, Oracle boat, just pushing forward. Now on the left of the course you've got the coast, and all day there's been rain clouds on that lured side. Now what that can mean is that there may well be a left-hand wind shift, and that's what Russell Coots, Hamish Pepper will be looking for. A left-hand shift, which will mean the bow of Oracle will rotate to the left. Notice here that Oracle didn't allow any separation once Alingi had come out of their tack, immediately tacking was Oracle, so not much separation there. They'll keep a close eye on each other throughout this beat. Just heard a whistle go off there. Now what that is, it's a safety device on the running backstay on both boats so they don't overlay, overload the running backstays. You hear it going off. Yeah, the no yeah. to Lured. BMW Oracle to Windward. That's getting out to nearly a clear cross as Alingi now attacks. Coming back for the first cross. Alingi is going to be about a quarter of a boat length behind BMW Oracle. So first blood to Oracle. What are their tactics from here, Peter? Immediately tacking in the face of Alingi. Certainly, Coots want to keep it pretty close, but the conditions are such that there looks to be an advantage on the left. Tactically, you protect the right, so it's a bit of a dilemma for the afterguards. That advantage with Oracle at the moment, 45 metres. So that's a couple of boat links there as they Complete their tacks into the tack again goes the Swiss boat Alingi. Pretty solid since the line. We've got out, uh, BMW Oracle have got out to 82. That's getting up to three lengths advantage to BMW Oracle. If we look at the animation, it's just showing uh, a couple of lengths. But more importantly, you can see that the tracking line veering to the left. That's indicating a lift on Port tack, Coots comes across, BMW Oracle taking advantage of the left-hand shift. What side of the track will they protect, left or right? Tactically, you protect the right, but the wind shifts here are coming from the left. Co to Genoa on both boats. Now, BMW Oracle this time are extending on out to that right hand. This could play in the hands of um, Alingi down there in the lured position if they pick up a bit of left-hand pressure. Well, that's the biggest separation they've had. As you see Alingi now on the ley line. BMW Oracle coming across as we see the replay, but my yes. word, there's not much in this, even though they've been apart for a while. Now, come back. Come back by Alingi as they approach Mark 1. They hooked into 
the left hand shift and a bit of pressure at the top uh, uh, on that left side so mark one after winning the start bmw oracle comes round. bear away set watch the hoist from oracle there's a lingy come around in their trail and that margin is only about 10 or 11 seconds good hoist by oracle excellent hoist by oracle but a lingy hot on their trail up next to Lingi down, but not out. It will take some Swiss precision to make a comeback. Russell Coots, Hamish Pepper, Hamish Wilcox, some of the afterguard on board. BMW Oracle will be happy with that first leg and the mark rounding which sees them in front of a Lingi. But my word, Peter, a Lingi are within range, aren't they, to do some damage? Lingi have set themselves nicely here on the right-hand side on the corner of BMW Oracle. Now, what that is doing is setting up for the next jive. They'll track down here. They'll, they're sailing a deeper angle than, than optimum, so they're not actually going their target speed. This is the crucial time after this jibe. BMW Oracle rolls into the jibe. Simultaneous jibe with Alinghi. She will come over on the windward side, looking for the wind shadow down onto the mainsail of BMW Oracle. This could be the turning point of this leg as Oracle come bower up to try and keep their air clear around the front of Alinghi's spinnaker. Alinghi will also go bower up and sail parallel. Well, look at the afterguard. They're checking what the opposition are doing as well as seeing what lies ahead. But really, this is as close as it gets and this is a situation that Oracle knows is very dangerous for them. Overlap. The spotter in the back of Oracle with the arm vertically raised means the boats overlap. But we can see that Alinghi is on a charge. Here they come. They've got the wind shadow down on the leeward boat, creeping forward. Very clear overlap signal there by the spotter. I think it's Carla Bennett. And Alinghi still pushing forward. Can they collapse the Jenica on BMW Oracle? Look, the sail's going soft. This is a lead change to BMW. Oh, BMW Oracle have been rolled by Alinghi. But yeah. it's a long way around the outside. Still really only bow to bow, although the indicator is that Alinghi have turned in front, got in front of Oracle. Now we've got a reverse of the situation where Oracle will be the windward boat. Alinghi the leeward boat. Oracle now are putting their foul air down onto Alinghi. Boats now even as they approach the bottom mark gate. The bottom mark turning will be crucial. In this situation, normally we could look for a split at the bottom mark. The leading boat has the pick. The trailing boat overlap. So the option of the right-hand marker has been taken away from Coots. We could see the flag raised there, the Y flag. Green flag by the umpires. That's what they're aiming for, the bottom mark gate. Not even a boat length in it as they get set for the next mark rounding. And this is a vital stage. My word, this downwind run has been quite sensational. With BMW Oracle being rolled and then in turn taking back that lead from Alinghi. Look for a split at the bottom mark. Two marks, two options for the crews. At the bottom of the screen, you've got a mark. At the top of the screen, Coots is going for the bottom of the screen mark as Alinghi takes the other option, very close. BMW Oracle just ahead and heading out on Port Tack, Alinghi on starboard. Five seconds, there's nothing in this. It was 11 seconds at the first mark. A great downwind run featuring these two crack teams and there's nothing in it as they head into the second upward beat. Oracle tax protecting the right. Now, showing nine metres, but that's not enough to get round the bow. Here's the first cross of the second windward beat. This is going to be an advantage to BMW Oracle. What option are the crew going to take? 
Are they going to keep protecting the left-hand side, which has looked, wind-wise, the left looks good. Tactically, you want to protect the right. Oracle, clear ahead. So Oracle on starboard tack and crossing just in front of Alinghi. The opportunity now. Will Pepper and Coots continue on out to the left? And will Alinghi come back? Butterworth will be watching. Knows this area so well. Knows exactly what Coots is probably thinking. A little bit of separation. And Alinghi just powers on, looking for separation. Oracle comes and tacks in the windward position, wanting to keep in phase. A little bit of an arm wrestle here as they just try and figure out what boat's faster. But back comes Alinghi. You hear that whistle going off. That's the, the maximum load for the running back stays. Neither team willing to allow too much separation. There's too much at stake. It's the first race in the Challenger final. And there's so little in this race. But again, that left-hand side, in terms of wind direction and pressure, or, or increase in wind speed, seems to be paying. Another split. Alinghi tacking away. Coots tack right on their face. These boats are 25 metres long. So when she's out to 50 metres, we've got a couple of lengths. Alinghi go back short. Now, they would not have been up to maximum speed there, so that means the afterguard of Alinghi very much also want to track along to the left-hand side. The distinctive style there of Ed Beard. The helmsmen stand up very high, get a good view. All the rest of the crew be below the, the shear of the gunnels to keep down the windage. Now, that's the reason Alinghi came back short. We can see... The ley line on the starboard side is quite close. Good example there of the, the veins of wind on the water. The darker colours are the increase in wind speed. So that margin is still around 60 metres. BMW Oracle heading out to the left. Quite happy with that. Now we see the first tack for some time with uh, Oracle coming back on port tack. Oracle getting, well, on the ley line. On the ley line. Oracle's on that ley line. That's the yellow line. That's an imaginary line to the top mark. So Oracle has had a very, very good second windward beat. Protecting the left to extend. Remember, they were five seconds at the bottom mark. Lingy had that tack to make, so they'll drop a bit more distance between the two. So Oracle a bit more comfortable than when they went round this mark the last time. We see the blue marker boy. Change mark. So that means the race management have picked up the wind shift. Alan Smith on the bow. Bowman on Oracle. Bear away set. Both boats. In comes Alinghi, look for the asset. These two crews, very good on the crew work. Alinghi comes round. 17 seconds, a bit of an extension there for BMW Oracle Racing. So Pepper and Coots and the crew have done it well on that leg, but gee, 100 metres, and there's still a long way to go in this race. Well, 100 metres is a lot. That's four lengths, Ed Beard. Immediately in front, Warwick Fleury is on the main sheet. Alinghi Jive. Red Butterworth's looking back. I think if he jives, we still go straight. A little bit of a split here on the on the right. You've got Oracle. On the left, you've got Alinghi. Split developing. Yeah, we heard if he jives, we'll stay straight. We'll go straight. So Coots continues on port, just looking to keep his ear clear. The wind. In terms of turbulence, clear behind the sails of Alinghi. See that uh, bias at the bottom, at the finish? 62 metres, but they're still only halfway down this leg. Now, with the wind shift, of course, the, the course has actually got skewed. Probably 15, 10, 20 degrees. That means the finishing line is not square to the wind. The committee boat end is favoured. That shot, it looks as though Alinghi have closed up a little bit. Anyway, certainly 30 metres closer than what they were 
up a um, went round the mark. So they have eased up a little bit on that. BMW are often comfortable low as Brad Butterworth looks back. Well, he's looking back at nothing. If he looked ahead, he'd see Oracle in front by 80 metres. So that looks good for BMW Oracle Racing. Linky jives. Linky are setting up more towards the committee boat. Now that's a bit upwind with the wind shift. Oracle were pointing at the pin end. The separation is probably the line bias. Not far to go to the finish. Russell Coots, has he picked the right option? He has a glance. This has been a brilliant race all the way around. Coots has been in the lead. But down we come to the finish. Here come Alinghi. They've picked the good end of the finish line. BMW Oracle at the pin. Alinghi at the windward end. Oracle surging. Alinghi surging. They are very, very close. Who's got their first yellow flag? Russell Coots has been done on the line by Brad Butterworth and Ed Beard. What a stunning finish. Here we see it through virtual eye, and it is just a Lingi who get home after trailing by so much. Delight for a Lingi and victory in race one. Uh, I was a little confusing at the end there because Luigi uh, put the wrong flag up at first and then he changed over again. When did you know you had them? Well, it's frustrating to be behind, uh, you know, at the beginning of the race, and you know, we had a little, little hard time trying to decide which uh, side we wanted to start on. With the, there was some rain to the left, but there was a little bit of a shift uh, trying to come right again, and uh, you know, we just ended up without a, a real strong plan, and so we ended up behind. The boats are close, and you just got to keep banging on them if you can, and hope for the best. And uh, in the end, they they went to the uh, unfavored end of the finish line, and even though we jived twice more than they did on the run, we uh, we, we made it happen. The Swiss need just one more win to go through to the series finale while everything hangs in the balance for BMW Oracle Racing.